my lovely Calimaris. This is Calimara here. It's been a hell of a week for me and I feel like I'm barely staying afloat, but this video had to happen. This isn't a tea video detailing everything that has come out about Creepshow art. This is just my recounting of my experience with her for the brief moment I got to know her a bit more personally as a YouTuber and as a former fan of hers. If you want to know the full details, Spockter made a really good video about this, so I recommend you watch that. I was uncertain about making this video because I still can't really wrap my head around it. I wanted to wait until all the information came out so I had a better picture of what's going on, and now I in good conscience can't just stay quiet about it because I used to support Shannon. I defended her in the Peaches drama and I gave her so much benefit of the doubt, hoping she would do the right thing when it came down to it, but now she's just chosen to run away. It's funny because I've actually always intended to make a video on Creepshow art, but not like this. Not in this context. The video I'd planned was meant to be a video in support of her to thank her for being a good friend in my time of need, but now I'm really glad I listened to that nagging part in my head that told me to hold off making it, that something isn't right. For some context, Creepshow Art or Shannon has recently just been exposed for stalking a creator by the name of Emily Artful for years, and we'll put a pin in that, um, but she's also been exposed for making grand lies to try and protect her own image and posting horrendous hypocritical statements that go against everything she claims to be about in her videos on a website called LOLCOW. LOLCOW is a website where people come together and detail the actions of social media personalities very closely and talk shit about them. Frankly, slurs and other very triggering things get tossed around like it's nothing on those forums, so if you are sensitive to those kinds of things, I would discourage you from visiting it. What happened was, an admin from LolCow has confirmed certain honestly rather horrible messages posted over a span of years to be made by Shannon. For those of you who are curious about these posts, I've included a link in my description to the Twitter thread that compiled screenshots of the posts that were confirmed to be made by Shannon. Now, Shannon has denied this and claimed that her IP address was spoofed to post these messages in her name by a stalker, and shortly after this reveal, her YouTube account was hacked, and we're supposed to know this is the case because her header and picture was turned into glitches and her community section was shut off, preventing her from making any posts. She has apparently reclaimed her account now, and before making her James Charles-style exit, she's left a community post elaborating on the stalker situation. I've read through it, and it felt like I was reading a conspiracy theory written by Shane Dawson himself. To me personally, it sounds like someone desperately creating a story to completely shift the blame from themselves, completely denying everything and involving an unknown third party to scapegoat this on. Why? Because that's not the first time she's claimed to have been stalked or hacked before. She mentions it in every other video to the point her videos, to me, were always synonymous with the words harassment and hacking, and you wonder if she was just recounting a single instance over and over, or if this was a new, ongoing case. How do I know this? Because, as you might have seen from the title of this video and what I mentioned before, I was a huge fan of Creepshow Art. She was one of my inspirations for starting my YouTube channel, and I watched her for years before that. In her videos, she always seemed so real, like you were listening to an actual person who wasn't putting up a persona, who had flaws and isn't afraid to say what was on her mind. I thought, well, 
Maybe that outspoken nature ruffled some feathers and that's why she gets a lot of hate. And okay, maybe she said some iffy things now and again, but she always apologizes for them, right? And yet, you wonder why she was always the center of one controversy or another. Why people vehemently hated her enough to be determined to ruin her career. What was so bad about her? Surely, she was just misunderstood, and she had a bad rep, so people just assumed things about her, right? And all these people that were harassing her and hacking her, they just... Maybe she made some powerful enemies, I don't know. That was the line of thought I had. And back in February this year, I got into a copyright dispute. Uh... I just started doing YouTube seriously and I got a false copyright strike for a video that was completely fair use. I was super stressed out and distraught because this person I had to file a claim against was known for doxing people's private information and contacting workplaces and I had to give them all my information to dispute the strike. I was freaking out for a week straight and then... Shannon shouted me out in her community post, telling her fans to send me some love, and that really gave me a big boost in f subscribers. I don't have the post now because Shannon's basically cleared out her entire community, and I don't think I screenshotted it, but essentially, she helped me. She even mentioned me in her video when she posted the next time after that. And she even DM'd me on Instagram asking how I was doing and I was so over the moon. Shannon has since deleted her Instagram account but I still have the DMs which are on screen now. You can pause if you want to read them. But this meant a lot to me. I gushed about it to my best friend and... I was telling him how she was so kind and thoughtful and that only furthered my confirmation bias towards her. You see, when the Hopeless Peaches drama first started, I took Shannon's side and defended her. I've since privated that video after I realized how wrong I'd been and how the narrative I believed was entirely false, so I couldn't in good faith leave it up, and I actually got to spoke to Peaches and apologize to her personally as well. Looking back now, I, I'm really glad I did that, because I would have been spreading a completely false narrative and so much misinformation. But even then, I still didn't think any ill thoughts towards Shannon. I thought maybe she was just out of the loop because she wasn't on Twitter anymore and when I made my final video on the Peaches drama, basically correcting myself and trying to hold Shannon accountable for the information she spread in her videos, I still went out of my way to ask Shannon if it would be okay because at that point, I still thought of her as a friend and that despite her mistakes, she still had a good heart deep down. But I was horribly mistaken. I thought it was strange that despite the truth coming out about Peaches, Shannon never made any effort outside of an Instagram story to address it. And even in that story, all she said was that the drama was over, but she never really held herself accountable for the lies she had spread about Peaches. She moved on, and I didn't think much of it because Peaches also didn't want the drama to keep going, so it was really for the best that we all just dropped it. But looking back at it now in hindsight, it's probably because she didn't want to take accountability. Which is funny, because she used to be the person who called people out for messing up and not taking accountability, but oh how the tables have turned. What I've learned these past few days made me realize she wasn't who I thought she was, and even made me question why she started her channel in the first place. Remember when I said that Shannon stalked Emily Artful for years? Well, 
A lot of the things she claims her hacker did to her sounds eerily similar to the things Emily claimed Shannon actually did herself. To give you the gist of it, Shannon allegedly became fixated on Emily and started actively trying to sabotage her life due to some bad blood in their personal life involving another person who the both of them were romantically involved with at one point. Not at the same time, just they both dated the same person at different points. When Emily created a YouTube channel, she kept getting these really hateful messages and comments from people who she didn't know. And it was strange because she couldn't figure out who could possibly be doing this. And not long after, Shannon also created a YouTube channel and she started doing very similar videos to her while trying to direct Emily to her own channel. Allegedly, people just started trying to direct her attention to this new creator called Creepshow Art. And Emily started getting messages from people calling her a Creepshow Art knockoff and also opposite messages saying that Creepshow Art was copying Emily. So, it's all really confusing and I don't know how I'm supposed to process this, if this is all even true or if it's just he said, she said, which most of this kind of drama is. Uh, but all I can think in my head is, is Shannon just projecting when she talked about her stalker? Was her entire channel started just out of spite towards someone else? Is the persona I'm familiar with completely fake? I don't know. But if all the answers to this was yes, then... Well, I'm not surprised because deep down I feel like people can't genuinely like me if I don't have anything to offer them anyway. The person that Emily spoke about sounded like a nasty, petty, vindictive person who will go through extreme lengths to hurt people. That's not a person I want to be associated with, let alone support. Especially if they haven't even made an effort to change their ways. I suggest you listen to Emily's story and draw your own conclusions from it. The video will be linked in the description. But the point I'm trying to get at here is that Habits are hard to break. I mentioned this before in my Gabby Hanna video, but just because you get what you want, it doesn't immediately mean you become a better person overnight. And we see now that even after finding success in her YouTube channel, after she connected with so many other content creators, Shannon continued to engage in those lol cow forums and continued to do what she was doing before shit talk them. Maybe she genuinely doesn't see anything wrong with that because she's been doing it for so long. Or maybe she thought she could infiltrate the forums to control the narrative by drawing drama away from herself and onto other people. In fact, the reason this all came out was because the lol cow admins got sick of Shannon constantly promoting herself on the forums, which was apparently against their rules. So this theory does hold water. But again, it is just a theory. Spockter said in his video that Shannon hadn't expected her channel to gain success and because she was no longer anonymous, everything she did behind closed doors that any regular anonymous person could have gone away with now had a big name and face to it, which makes it easier for people to hold that person accountable and judge them for it. And I personally agree with that. Does that excuse her from doing it in the first place? Absolutely not. The fact that Shannon continued to engage in those forums with the confidence that she was going to get away with it and her complete denial of everything despite some pretty concrete evidence makes me think that she never really cared to improve herself beyond lip service to begin with. And that made me think to what extent were her relationships with people online were actually real? Did she ever consider anyone friends or did she just see them as a means to an end? And for me personally, 
To what extent had her concern back then been genuine? What was the likelihood she would have shit-talked about me in the same way she did with Peaches, Ready to Glare, and D'Angelo Wallace? Did she just see me and the Christian show as a charity case to boost her own image? Or maybe she wanted to spite Lily Jean because she already doesn't like Lily Jean either. In all honesty, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I'm having trouble believing that this person who was so kind and generous to me was the same person who was saying and doing the same horrible things she condemned other people for doing. I'm confused and I don't know what's real and what's fake anymore. But most of all, I think I'm just disappointed. Disappointed that things had to end this way and that she had chosen to react and address it this way. And I'm sure I'm not the only person. Especially, I watched Ready to Glare's video as well. And she mentioned in her video that Shannon had just sent her a rose out of nowhere because they were friends. And then this whole thing came out and that sort of thing just tears you up inside and I'm not even that personally involved with Shannon. I can't imagine what it must be like for people who were. But the bottom line is, I no longer support Creepshow Art. I am grateful for the support she gave me when I barely had any subscribers, but as of now, she is not someone I can stand behind. Do I think she's completely irredeemable? No. People have done much worse things, and I genuinely think everyone can change for the better if given the chance, and the internet is just as forgiving as it is vindictive. People are very good at telling whether someone has truly changed or not, and I encourage everyone watching this video to draw their own conclusions and not take what people say at face value, not even your idols. And that includes me too. Unless Creepshow Art comes back with irrefutable proof that she was framed by a stalker, or if she just comes clean, owns up to everything, apologizes, and actively changes her ways, then I don't think she deserves your support either. It can be hard to accept when someone you look up to makes a mistake or does something bad. You justify and justify it in your head, because you're their fan. Surely this person could do no wrong, and even if they are, they, you would still support them because you're their fan. Well, just remember that you are a person with morals first, and if the person you support doesn't align with your beliefs, then you don't have to keep supporting them. But let me know what you guys think of this whole situation down in the comments below. It was really harsh reality check for me. Especially with everything that I'm already dealing with. And I just really had to make this video to put my thoughts out there and verbalize instead of just internalizing it inside my head and driving myself insane. So if you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. Follow me on all my social media. Uh, Check out my comic because that would make me really happy and I really, really need to feel happy right now. And I will see you guys in the next video. And I'm sorry that it was such a, it's been a hard hitting topics one after another with my videos. Hopefully the next one is more cheerful. But yeah, goodbye.